Right, it's May 30, 2017. I'm looking at yet another uh, water level sensor. This time I've got a pressure transducer. This is an NXP, about a five or ten dollar item. It's a, a, a differential sensor. It has a atmosphere port and a pressure port. It's a uh, NPX V7002DP. This is a uh, eBay AliExpress type of a thing. On the back of it, the sensor says CJMCU-36. Has uh, power. 5 volts ground and analog output and I've got an Arduino clone I'm measuring here once a second this at 0 psi differential between the two ports it outputs half of the 5 volts so the Arduino sees it as 512 I've calibrated this in inches of water nothing precise about any of this but it's an example of of a uh, quick and dirty sensor and we're going to see how good it works and what the problems are. So I've got a hose hooked onto it and the hose didn't fit this port. It was too big so I put a couple pieces of heat shrink and some hot glue on there and uh, let's have a look at the data. So this is the plot. You can see it's got about zero inches. If I pinch the end of it closed like this and then I squeeze the tube we can see it go up. You can make it move by doing that so something's happening. And if I stick it to this ruler and then uh, immerse the ruler in this water column behind me or in front of you we'll get to see what happens so let's, uh, let's have a look at the water column it's about 13 inches of water right there it doesn't matter whether the tube is straight or not it just matters how deep the tip of the tube is so let's stick it in to uh, 6 inches and see what we get so that's about six inches. We're off by a half inch or so. And uh, there's uh, about 10 inches. And that's full depth, which is about 12 and a half. And the first thing we notice is the downward slope. Once it hits the point, it starts to relax and uh, so there's two things that are going on here. One, this tube water uh, gets into the tube. You can see it the water level is up here. So once the water gets into the tube it, it uh, subtracts off that pressure because the tube is too big so that it doesn't have a it doesn't act like a capillary. The water doesn't stay out. So probably a smaller tube would would solve that problem. You can see it hasn't, it's got, it's below zero because now this water column, this little water column that is now that long is hanging off of it. So if I turn it the other way, the, the water is pushing on it. So there's uh, two inches of water and if I, if I shake that water out, it will go back to zero. So that's one effect, one problem with use it with this sensor is not the sensor, not the integrated circuit that is the pressure transducer, which I believe is a uh, piezoelectric pressure transducer. Um, it's the fact that the tube's too big, and so the water gets in. And uh, so, uh, of course, there's all the problems with temperature variations and vapor and condensation and so on. So the next, the, the other problem is I suspect there's a leak right here in my superglue joint where it goes into the port. And of course there could also be a leak in the sensor. So to test for the leak, I got this idea of 
it's stabilized back to zero. If I if I pinch off the end of the tube in a vise, clamp the end off so that I don't have any leakage. So I've got a big surface area to pinch the tube this way, so it's it's a slow leak in any case. And then I squeeze the tube, I can pressurize the air in the tube, and I can see it uh, pressure go up, and then I can check the rate of leakage. So this is just like you would test a, a gas line where you you pressurize it, and then you wait to see the pressure drop. So I've got this into the v-groove of this bigger vise here and I'm going to I'm just going to crank it up and it's going to hit full scale okay so that's pinched down and you can see that the leak is pretty fast here because it's dropping down towards zero at a rapid rate so the place where I think that leak must be is right there. So without that leak we'd expect that to be stable. So this uh, sensor, this particular uh, sensor looks like it could go to only about a foot of water and it would have to have a hose that didn't leak or at least a joint that didn't leak in order to work. Uh, so the quick and dirty of it is that these ten dollar things work uh, except for, but you still have to have a physically good system now if I release this it should I should have a vacuum in it and sure enough it went to minus 16 and now you can see it's going it's headed back to zero in the other direction so as we'd expect the leak goes both ways it's a leak it's a vacuum leak and a pressure leak both and then if I remove the the plug in the end it'll get back to zero now it's yep it's right at zero at this time so that's this uh, NXP $10 breakout board. I think the sensor itself without not on the board is probably five or ten bucks and I think that this could be used to measure uh, some uh, things uh, where maybe you could have these arranged uh, on a on a vertical column once every foot let's say and then you would just look to see which one had an output and then the the ones that were completely that were more than a foot under water would be full scale and then you'd be able to to count up and then maybe if you had uh, you know four or five of them thirty or forty dollars worth of these things and then uh, to keep the power consumption down you just measure them uh, you know once a minute or something and you could see rates of rise that way and then you don't have to worry about about the drift because once it hits uh, hits the edge of that sensor that's stacked up in a ladder as you go up anyway just one sort of different way to try to do things just with these really cheap things how how good can you get with bad sensors and how good does it really need to be is the question. Anyway, it is May 30, 2017. This is the NXP cheapy pressure transducer water level.